guidance team, before we came in, we created a blueprint of what we want to accomplish, what we hope to accomplish in our life. And then everything else, like we have certain things that must happen. So those are like nexus points and things that we, we design in there. And then other things are experiences to learn from. Hello and welcome to Passion Harvest. I am Louisa, your host. Thank you so much for joining me wherever you are in the world right now. I can't wait to share this interview with you with Julia Cannon. She is the daughter of Dolores Cannon. Julia travelled extensively around the world with her mother, Dolores, for over a decade, helping to train others in the use of these miraculous healing techniques, reconnective healing, and Dolores's Cannon's quantum healing hypnosis. Julia is the author of Soul Speak, the language of your body. Julia, welcome to Passion Harvest. I'm my gosh, I'm so excited to have you on the show today. Welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so excited to have you on the show. I've, I've got so many questions for you. Um, okay. Dolores Cannon, your mother. What an yes. incredible woman. Yes. Um, yes. <laughs> wow. And I don't want to only focus on that, but I know you traveled extensively with her and worked on quantum healing hypnosis. Do you mind right. sharing a little bit with the audience about that? And what yeah, is it? For those that don't yeah, know. What is it? What is this crazy thing? Quantum healing hypnosis technique. We lovingly call it QHHT, to shorten it down a bit. Um, that's a hypnosis technique that my mother founded. She created it over her extensive time of hypnosis, um, close to 50 years of working with clients. Um, it started with my father. He was the first one, and then she learned from him, and then it just kept rolling. So, um, And they stumbled into other lives. It was really a really cool growing up <laughs> life experience. Um, but then my mother, when, when we were all leaving everything, she's like, I really want to learn more about that hypnosis stuff and about time travel. Because when they stumbled into these other lives, it was like, this was a time when this didn't happen happen you know we didn't know that my western world about this and so um she wanted to learn more about that and, and explore that more so that's where she started learning about the different techniques and what works really well and so she kind of taught herself and in that vein came up with her own technique she learned what worked what didn't work what she liked what she didn't like and just kept going from there and that's where she created this technique and it was really cool in the beginning it was just about getting like historical information. It was going to other lives, past lives. And, and she had all this wonderful historical information. That was her major love, you know, absolutely love these things. So it was time travel. And then as it kept developing and growing and she got more comfortable with it, then more things kept opening up to her. And that's where, I mean, I don't know if your audience is into extraterrestrials, but that's yes. where she was exposed to that, you know, and she was communicating with them and, and got, to understand exactly what their whole program is about. So she's got a couple of several books on that. And then it went from there, it brought branched out even larger into accessing the all knowing part in each and every one of us. And that's what ultimately became QHHT. And that's what's the quantum and the, the, everything so grand about it is where when you have a QHHT session, you are accessing that part of you that has all the answers. You, we, you know, we say that all the time. We all have the answers. All answers lie within. It's just a matter of contacting that part of us that so, has it. So that's so, what we do. Sorry, to, sorry. So what yeah. is the all-knowing part? It's that part. It's it's the connection to source, to God. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's what this is. It, it's it's we could call it the bigger, the higher self. I mean, we love I think a lot of us term it that way. I have bleh, I can't talk the higher self, mm -hmm. the over soul. The, um, you know, all knowing unconscious, you, you know, um, I get visuals a lot. And so that part of me will communicate with me and visuals. A lot of people, that's what it's doing. You're, we're, we get information from this part of ourselves all the time, if we will just allow it. And so that part showed me pictures. It's like gave me pictures to draw. And I do that in classes and different things about like what it is we're actually working with. And in that picture, it was showing 
we all have this part of ourselves. We, it's that bigger part. I call it big me. There's big me and there's little me, mm-hmm. you know, little me is this part and the human body. And this is the part that we, so it's so funny because we think this is the big deal, you know, Hey, I'm the, I'm the one here that means that is so important. And it's like, this is nothing compared to who we really are. And that's that grand part of us that just sent a piece of itself down to have this experience called you and me and and everyone. So, but that part bridges and is connected to source or God. So in essence, that is what makes the statement true that we are God is because all of this, that's the all knowing part of us is the source of all. And we take out, we take out, lives that we perceive so seriously but through this quantum healing technique we can can not only connect with source but connect with all these uh fractals or elements of other lives or as you said time travel and extraterrestrials and other dimensions which you explore which is just (laughs) mind-blowing yeah it shows us who we really are and i feel like that's the biggest thing that we need to understand is we're not like you said, we take this so seriously and this is such a small degree of what it's all about. This is the part of us that has having experiences to learn from. That's why we're here. We wanted this plane of existence gives us wonderful material and a medium to learn from. So that's why we do it. And then we have, and it's then to figure out this connection and to figure out who we are. This is what I feel like why we're here now at this time is to understand that who we really are. I, I want to ask you about your incredible reconnective healing in a minute, but first I just, for the audience, a question, the suffering, why do we suffer? What? Why do we need these experiences of, of suffering in this human experience? Mm-hmm. To learn from. I just, uh, that we have experiences mm-hmm. to learn from now how you term it is going is a big part of your experience, you know, I'll, and, and that's something um, that I like to, this is like become a mission for me anymore. It's like, it's to catch words like that. It's like, Oh, I've been suffering for this from, from this for so long. And it's like, you know, when you say words like that, you are defining your experience, you know, you're having a suffering experience. How about we reframe the wording And maybe you're having an experience that you're learning tremendous things from or something, whatever, just shift the wording and you will shift what's happening in there. But as long as it's suffering, you are defining everything all the time. And so, and you're always creating, we are majorly great and powerful beings. We are major creator beings. So this is what we're learning. And part of who we really are, we're understanding our powers of creation all start with our thoughts, our words, and our beliefs. So if we believe we're suffering, then we're going to keep creating a suffering existence. See how that, that's why reframing things and shifting the wording and something like, oh, that's so simple. It can't be like that, but it really is. And that's what we're discovering more and more is you change this and this and your beliefs, your whole world changes. Mm. It sounds so simple, but sometimes it can be hard. So if you were to give some tips for the audience, if they wanted to change their life mm-hmm. or what, what's your advice? Change your thoughts. It starts with your thoughts. It really does. Um, you want to look at what's going on in there. I mean, if your life is not, our lives are reflections of our thoughts. It's that simple. So you want to look at what's going on in here. So if you're looking at your world and like, you know, I don't care for what's happening here, then look inside. It's nobody else's fault. It's, it's, it comes down to each and every one of us. And this is a big thing that we've got to accept with personal responsibility for our own lives. People aren't doing things to us. We are creating situations that we can learn from. So, and those are based on, again, our thoughts and our words and our thing. If we believe that we're supposed to be, having a hard time. I mean, look at how we say a lot of times things, you know, it's like, oh, I'm having such a difficult time with this. And well, that's, you're defining it again. You're making it going to be difficult. And I know that seems like it can't be that simple, but it really is. The universe is very, very simple and it's very, very literal. So that's why it's very important. I, 
I like to say mindful. Let's be mindful of our thoughts, mindful of our words, because knowing that these things create, then then you're you're the one that's choosing what you will put out there. So as far as it starts there. So the points are it's check in with yourself. What am I thinking? What am I doing? What am I contributing to this situation that could be causing this? You know, what am I wanting to learn from this? Always look at things. What am I learning? Because that will pull you out of any victim mindset that you might be having. And it's easy to go into victim and not even realize you're there. Um, so that way you can, as soon as you've gone, what am I learning from this? See, that shifts the whole perception that you have of it. You're looking at it as something that you can benefit, that you can learn something from rather than woe is me. Why is this happening to me? I don't understand. Because as long as you're in that state, nothing can happen. You're in a spiral and it just it just can't work. You know, you're, you're going to keep going down and you're never going to get what you want from it. You're always going to be more creating more and more of the same, if that makes sense. Of course. And, and it's, it's sure. kind of similar to the very popular terms, the, the law of attraction or manifesting, Absolutely. whatever you think about, you'll get more of. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's just, you know, but let's just take, it just goes beyond that. I mean, but that is absolutely it. It is what you think about, you create. And so, but let's take it literally because that is what is happening. I think sometimes we, we pass it off as, oh yeah, that's that positive mumbo jumbo. Yeah. I just, you know, think positive things and it will happen, but it's, it's literally what you're thinking. So you want to be very mindful of what you're putting into this calculator and this computer up here, because it's creating, it's taking information in and it's creating from that. <laughs> Absolutely agree. It's just that, that the reminder, we all know this, but, well, the audience, yeah. our, the Passion Harvest yeah. audience will. But Thank you, Julia. Big congratulations on your book, Soul Speak, The Language of Your yeah. Body and Reconnective Healing. I know you're a nurse for 20 mm -hmm. plus years. Yeah. Um, healing, how do we connect with our body and what is our body teaching us? Yes, yes. So that is something else. When we came into our lives, so this, this kind of goes back, back again to who we really are. You know, we're great and powerful beings and we chose to have an experience, this life. And so, but before we came in, we, with our guidance team, because we're never alone, we always have guides, we have our higher self, all of this is our team that helps us through our lives. So with that guidance team, before we came in, we created a blueprint of what we want to accomplish, what we hope to accomplish in our life. And then everything else, like we have certain things that must happen. So those are like nexus points and things that we we design in there. And then other things are experiences to learn from. Okay, so we have these different things. So we're going on our path. And I like to compare it to a maze. You know, those maze, like you have the really tall walls and you can't see over them. You can't really see where you're going. You've just got to fumble your way through and you're hitting, you know, all these blocks and things like that. I like to compare life to a maze. And it's like, sometimes that's how it feels. We're just, you know, wandering aimlessly, not really knowing we kind of have a long-term goal. Maybe I'd like to do this, you know, in this conscious state, but then we get confused. We get knocked down a lot, <laughs> a lot. <laughs> so, um, you know, these things happen. And so we get lost in our maze. A lot of times that part of us, our guidance team has the overview OK, so it can show us, you know, it knows when we're off course. And it's like, you know, you needed to be over here. You're still going this way. And your your plan before you came in, you had this plan. You got to be over here by whatever point. You know, it's like you're running out of time. I use my own situation as, you know, it's not really a health, but it shows how the messages we're always getting messages. Our guidance team is always communicating with us um, and they'll do it in many, many different ways. I mean, we can actually hear them if we will allow that and if we'll believe it. It's believing and allowing that allow, you know, that, that makes that happen. But if you don't believe, that's okay. They have other ways to communicate. And so it might be through other people just saying things to us. It might be signs. It might be animals. It might be numbers. It might be all kinds of things, ways to get messages to us to shift course, go a different way, go some way, whatever, whatever the message needs to be. But let's say, like in my case, 
um, you know, I was on the wrong path or I was, I was done with the path I was on is what it was saying. And it kept telling me, I kept getting messages. You need to go over here now. And it's like, it, it was a big shift from where I was. And I'm like, why would I do that? I, I'm very comfortable over here. Why would I do that? And um, they're like, and I would make, I would kind of try to play, you know, I'd go along with it. And then I got scared, uncomfortable. So then I go back to my comfort zone. And that happened over the course of like two years. I got four messages, four very distinct messages. And this, I was hearing them, you know, it would just be like, you got to go. You got to, it's time to go. You got to do this. And I'm like, well, I just kept going, why would I do that? Why would I do that? But then I would make some moves. And um, the fourth time I said, I said, I think I said the magic word because I said this time and they were very clear. You need to go to Arkansas and make a healing center. And I'm like, I'm in Missouri at the time. <laughs> and uh, why would I do that? So I always, why would I do this? I don't, makes no sense to me. This time I'm like, how, how in the world am I going to do that? I think how was the secret word. <laughs> and it was as if the universe said, well, we'll just show you how. Very, very <laughs> facetiously. Um, and what I like to say is don't wait and let the universe do it because it's not pretty. If you're getting messages to shift and do something different, do it. If you wait for them, it is not pretty. And what happened, my life as I knew it ceased to exist completely annihilated, wiped away, everything was gone. And I was plucked from that world and put into the world of my mother, where, what are we doing now? A healing center, I mean, QHHT could be conceived as a healing center. <laughs> it was like, you know, um, many years later, yeah, I see exactly what happened. I was put over there. Now, I was not getting ailment messages, but that's how the universe will work. It was like, it's got to get you because this was our guidance team. We say it's the universe, but this is us. We had a plan. Okay. So this is just us giving ourselves the details. It's like, you got to get over here by this point. Okay. Got to get me there. However you, need, however you need to do it. So guidance team, do it. Now, if I would have, maybe, I, I'm not going to even use that as an analogy. I'll just use, um, that was my situation with that. But other times, some people have the aches and painuses and illnesses, all these different things. And if you look at them, they are ways to get you moving. Something has happened. You know, many times there are messages about you are stuck, you're in the wrong direction, whatever. You need to shift. You need to move and go somewhere else in another direction. Or you just stopped moving altogether. We got to get you going. So that's where a lot of these come in. And you'll see these in the, in the body, how they translate. And so that's where our guidance team, like I said, they will talk to us. They can communicate with us in all these other wonderful ways. But if we're not getting it, then they've got to use something that we will get no matter what. And that's the body because we are with the body 24 seven, seven days a week. We are with it constantly. So that is something that we will get. And the best way to get our attention with the body is pain pain will get your attention okay so that's it's why so well. and, yeah. i just want to clarify when you say moving it doesn't necessarily mean a geographical location a, a moving right. but just a change of direction a change Correct. of career or whatever it might be it doesn't mean whatever it might be physically moving to a different state or country right. or it might be, but it's but usually it's just a shifting. It's a shifting of maybe a career, uh, maybe a yeah. It's something uh, I've seen a lot of times. People had dreams. There's so many times. This is what low back translates to a lot of times when there's stuff going on in the low back or at the back in general. Um, is that there was something they wanted to do when they were younger? It, the back and it goes down into the hips. So it's like there was something they wanted to do and they never went through with it. And now the bot, the, the, that was their dream. That may have been what they really wanted to accomplish, but see, they let it go. And now it's the, their guidance team is like, you need to pick that back up. You need to do it. And then, so see, that's a shifting of what you're doing. Maybe, you know, your all your goals and everything, but it's what you really wanted to do when you came in there. I'll get messages as we go. Um, this is what's happening right no, now. No, I it's love, I love the messages. <laughs> Keep going with the guidance. Okay. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're saying right now is, Pay attention to what 
dreams you had when you were little because though when you were little you were really connected when you were younger and look at what was happening there because you came in knowing what you wanted to do so pay attention to that so if anybody's really far off and you're not sure what you're supposed to be doing go back and look at what you really wanted to do when you were little that's a good indicator <laughs> thank you um i'm just thinking about dreams when i was younger as we're talking um so specific pains that show up in mm -hmm. locations in their body, they're related mm -hmm. to things we've repressed or didn't mm -hmm. change that was our soul's calling. Is right. Um, exactly. Yeah. It's like, this is what you came in to do, what you, you know, that's, yeah, it's what you planned. And then somehow either you got off course or it's just time. And you're not understanding that you need, because we get really comfortable. And we don't, a lot of times we don't want to change. And it's like, even though I'm, we're miserable in this one, th and it's like, I don't see how to make this one work. And that's where they're like, you got to go over here. And I hear that a lot. Um, I see that so much um, lately. The people are like, maybe they had corporate professions and everything. And then now the spiritual thing is calling and going, you need to do this. Or like, how does this work? I mean, and how do I live with this? You know, I mean, yeah. I'm used to corporate work and, and I'm used to that kind of money. I'll just get real. We're used to that money and that lifestyle. And then the spiritual world is like, well, here, come over here and do that. And they're like, how on earth can I do it with that? You know, how do I make money over there? And I will just, there's somebody wondering about this. That's why this is coming up. So I will let you know that it's like in my situation, they were like, this is how well, we, you, one way is you cut off your lifestyle. You completely cut it off and then you can make it not recommended. You know, it's, it's really harsh. That was what happened to me, but it worked. Um, but I will tell you, just follow them. You will always be supported. Follow your guidance. You are never left without a net. You're ne never left what's the word over a, over a barrel you're never you're always supported so follow it because and, and you will be supported I I was forced to shift I'll say that but I understand now it was all part of the plan I'm, I'm so glad I'm over here now I went kicking and screaming at the time and I didn't understand it for years but now I get it and now that, you know, after embracing it, see, then everything came in and supported. And I, you know, I live fine in the spiritual world. So yes. just I'm, follow the path that has been set for you and the guidance. Follow your guidance. I, I've, okay. found, I've found in my own life, if I resist it, the universe has a funny way of pushing you, kicking and screaming. For the mm -hmm. audience of those that have diagnosed serious illnesses, what is your mm -hmm. advice? Well, we'd have to look at what it is, um, what it is. The thing is, if it's a diagnosed serious illness, that means you've been getting messages for a long time and not listening. And so the message, see, then the body is now talking and it has to get louder and louder and louder. And that meaning it's got to go, it, it's going to get worse and worse and worse. It's trying to get your attention. When it gets your attention and delivers the message that it wants to deliver, it will go away. And I know that sounds crazy. It's like how that can't be because this is really, you know, this is I've had this forever. And the doctors say this is going to be it for me. But it's really just it's a message. We just haven't understood that that's what it is. As soon as you understand the message and you take action, see, there's no more need for the message. And that's what it's all just a message. It's like a postman delivering. Once they deliver it to you and you read it and now you do whatever it's wanting you to do, they're not going to keep delivering a, a letter to you, right? You're, they've done their part. That's what that is. Until you, it, when you, as long as you're not listening, they're going to keep, they have to deliver it. This is their yeah. job. I mean, look, I'm not diminishing what anyone who mm -hmm. may be listening to this nor you experiencing, mm -hmm. but it's interesting. I heard the term, I mean, I've heard it for a while. Disease is disease within mm -hmm. the body for those that have illnesses and they say, Oh my God, I'm not hearing the messages. Well, what do they do? 
just ask your body. It, it's however it works for you. If you believe in an all-knowing higher part of yourself, you can ask that part, or you can just ask your body, ask the body part, because it's trying to tell you something. So just say, well, what are you trying to tell me? Just that simple. What are you trying to tell me? And then get quiet. Just be quiet and listen. Because so much of the time we're just constantly, and that's why it has to get louder and louder is we talk over it <laughs> and we have so many distractions. It's like, well, not going to listen to any of that, but that's, and sometimes that's a big part of it. They just want us to get quiet and listen and go within. Sometimes that's the whole thing, but just get quiet and whatever comes in, whatever you hear, feel, sense, whatever, that's your answer. Now, Sometimes, like in, in the beginning, when I was first getting answers, I wasn't sure if I was really getting something. And so there again, the universe started sending me confirmation. <laughs> so within a 24-hour period, I would get three confirmations. And then that was showing me to trust, trust myself and the information I'm getting. See, and that's huge. That's huge for us. We're, we're in a society, we're in a world right now where we have been giving all of our power out to all these other beings, doctors and whoever else, you know, anybody else with, with to take care of us, put me back together, make me whole, whatever, you know, fix me, fix me, fix me. And our, the time is for us to take our power back. And that's what they say, go within, you have the answer. So ask yourself what it wants you to do. So your first thing is, what are you trying to tell me? You get the information. That's building that trust there. And then you can go further. It's like, okay, what, what do you want me to know? What do I need to know about this? You go, you keep asking questions because you'll get an answer. And then it's, what do you need to know? What do you need to do? You know, so all of these things are leading you to the next step. And when you act on that, the doing is your acting. Now, once you do it, see, then it will go away. And, you know, again, we've got to go back to the beliefs, you know, if a, if you're, um, and I totally get it, you know, there's a, there's a habit that happens when we have pain and we have illness and we have things, it becomes a part of us sometimes. And, and so I, I just want you to be aware that even if a doctor, even if somebody of a professional nature says, this is your fate, this is how it is, it can never be cured. I want you to take your power back and say, you know what, how about I make that decision? How about my body decides for me? And let's, and then, and then just do this, try it. What have you got to lose? Yeah. This just is almost like, it. as you term the secret language of the body. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Your body, you our bodies are talking to us. Mm -hmm. I love that. I have to ask you about, you keep getting this guidance. You spoke mm -hmm. before about spirit guides or guidance. What, what, what does that mean to you? Well, we have, uh, they, they told me to call them the guidance team. Um, Cause there's like many um, part of it's the higher self. Cause we have that plan. And so that's, we, I, we could call it the universe, whatever it's, it's our guidance team, but we have some people call them guides and guardian angels. You know, it's assistance from the spirit realm that's through our entire life. We, every single person has at least one guardian angel guide, you know, that, that's with them their entire life. And then as they go through different things, they might have another one or two or so different ones come in and out, depending on what is necessary for whatever they're going through, whatever they're working on or something, they might come in with a field of expertise, you know, to help uh, in there. So that's important, one, to know that we're never alone. We, a lot, so many times we think, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm here. And what am I doing here, first of all? And then I'm uh, all by myself and trying to navigate this crazy place. Know that we came in with a plan. We had a team. We're, we're, not, we're just the one on this side. We have a whole team behind us and with us helping all the way so it's a matter of just acknowledging that and allowing them to help they cannot help this is this is important <laughs> i don't know why somebody needs this because they're like why aren't they helping me have you asked they cannot help unless you ask that's because we have free will and how do you simple. how i was a, my next question you're a perfect <laughs> guest okay how do we ask <laughs> what do we do help can you please help me 
you just ask whatever it is you're wanting you know i need assistance with this please can you please help me and can you show me can you show me how to do this can you remember i said that one i was like how in the world am i gonna see i was asking at that point i was asking and they showed me they're like we're gonna take you from here and put you over here this is how we're gonna do it see i asked and I guess the more you establish a relationship with them, the easier the whatever form the communication, yeah. however it comes, is easier to interpret. Absolutely. And but it but it starts with that beginning. You have to start someplace. And that's what I'm saying is whatever comes in, then you'll get confirmation. Usually you'll get confirmation, but it, and that's to help you start developing the trust. The broader the trust goes, then the easier that communication gets. So you're developing trust so that you will trust that information. I keep going over here because this is where it tends to, I feel it. That's from on over your here. right hand side. On my that. right, yeah. <laughs> um, so that's what that means. But it's actually, I mean, it's, it's all around us and everything. It's not definitely, you know. So are you hearing it just out of interest or is it? I I, I used to hear it. Now it's more like a, a, an, an integration. It's like a knowing. I just, mm. I feel it. I just know something and it's really hard to describe it sometimes. Uh, knowing is an ability. You know, sometimes we think, oh, I have to be able to hear things or see things. or But knowing is an ability. And many, many people have that knowing ability and don't realize it. But you know something. You know that you know that you know and you don't know how you know. Saying that's, yeah, that's or, knowing. Or, or many times we ignore it for whatever reason that may be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and that's where sometimes that's a testing thing is to see you know, when you ignore it and you're like, oh man, I should have listened. Okay. So next time that happens, listen, mm -hmm. see, those are little things to help us gain that trust, build that trust with ourselves. This is us. It's us and our bigger self. The nudges in whatever way they come. What's mm -hmm. your uh, advice to the audience for those that are afraid of dying? Through QHHT, we this has been wonderful because we can see exactly what happens in the death process. Um, I have died many, many times. I've gone through many lives. And so I've gone through the death process and it's not, you're not done. I mean, you're just shifting from one plane of existence to another. It was described in one of the sessions that my mother did. This was early on when she was really curious about that whole death process. And she was like, so what is happening there? And they said, or what, has, what does it feel like? And they said, it's it's really as simple, it's as easy as if you're getting up out of one chair and sitting down in another. That's what it is like. And so you're just transitioning from one place to another. You are still feeling like you, you know? And I know when I've done this in a session, um, your, your consciousness is still there. You are just shifting in, in from a physical body into an energy body. You know, you just shift and you're just not visible anymore. You're still there. Um, and then you just have different awareness at that so point. I'm talking from our human experience here, but where do we go? We go on, we can go anywhere. Um, we go, primarily it's to the spirit side. You know, it's like, that, that realm, it's a dimension is what it is. We go into that spirit dimension and there's all kinds of things we can do there. Um, some people might term it as heaven, but um, my mother wrote about this. Uh, there's a book just on people going that it's called Between Death and Life. And that's where what happens to you when you die, where you go, all of it. I mean, there's like many places in the spirit plane that we can go. And it's like the um, the library the healing center. I mean, there, there's like healing rooms where we heal if we had a very traumatic life. Um, we can go to the library where we're learning, you know, from uh, maybe preparing for the next life or whatever. We're always learning. And that's why we come here. Earth plane or any physical existence is accelerated learning. So we're learning on the spirit plane theory. It's as, you know, we're reading, it's essentially we're reading all these books and then we want to put it into practice. So that's why we come and we have a life, a physical life is to experience what we've been reading about. Basically, that's a really simplistic way of putting it. So, okay. and then we learn, we have soul growth is so much faster. And why we pick earth? Because people <laughs> say, well, I'd never want to come back. <laughs> exactly don't want to come back but we once we get back over there it's like oh man i oh that was such a 
such a fun experience. That's what we'll say. You know, I don't want to be here, but then we get over there. It's like, oh man, mm-hmm. that, that went so fast. I want to go back. <laughs> I learned so much. I mean, <laughs> we forget um, when you're on that side, you, you, you're not attached to the emotions. And that's why we want to come to earth because, because of all the wonderful emotions that we have here, we can learn 10 times faster by experiencing those emotions and we can uh, on the spirit plane learning theory and so we're coming in it's like oh yeah that's going to be easy hate love jealousy ah no no problem i can handle that then we get in here in the middle of it all we're like oh my gosh what is this crazy place you know and it's just but we're learning and that's why if we, the faster we can go to what am i learning from this see the the faster we'll move through different things that we wanted to um, create for ourselves experiences, you know, to learn from. And, and do you feel there's an end point or the, when we no longer reincarnate? I, you know, it's like, I think there probably is. I, I, to some degree there, there is, but I, but it's like, when do you ever stop learning? I mean, when you look at the whole, um, if we're going to keep going out and looking at the whole, and if we are all, every time we learn more, then that expands everything and that expands the source. And that then at what point is there an end point? See, if it's always expanding. So it's like, I don't know that, why, why would we? You know, if it's always for the greater growth, we're growing and everything grows. So, I mean, I know we always want, when is this over? When is this over? <laughs> but when you, if we can pull back and look at it that way, we're, you know, we're always investing in this huge growth process. So I don't, that's, that's a good question because I don't think it's ever been asked. And I, what I'm feeling is I don't think there is an end point. Okay. I think it's just always expanding. Thank you for your honesty. Gosh, growing up with a mother like Dolores must have been incredible. <laughs> with your past life regressions, have you seen or experienced other past whatever however you want to term them other lives that uh have influenced this life or are connected with this current life you recognize as julia yes yes there's two that are significant and funny enough they were like the some of the two the very first one i experienced was just a real calm life and i think that was nice to introduce me to the whole thing but after that, um, there were two lives that um, that were very traumatic, and they both link to this life, which is really interesting. One of them uh, was the life apparently right before this. I was a newspaper editor in San Francisco, and I got involved with some underground mafia kind of thing. I don't know. It was something in the forties, and um, <clears throat> and. I was distributing information through the newspaper for these people. It's like somehow distributing codes that they could use in their gambling or something. I don't know. I didn't know all the ins and outs, but it was something used that way in the race forms. Um, And then I didn't like to do that. I wanted out. And so they, they killed me. Um, But the thing that was interesting, I was an editor and see in this life, Things like that came very, very easily to me. I was reading fifth grade books before I even started school. And I editing comes very easily. I'm very, you know, I, I pick up on things like that very easily. See, that's something transitioning from that life. So sometimes talents that we have kind of coming from other lives. The other life that probably has the greatest impact that I'm understanding more and more all the time, um, I don't it you can only roughly gauge a, a time period based on the dress and everything, but it was probably back in, you know, around the time of the witch trials and stuff. But I don't know if that was even part of it, but I was, I was into herbs and I was growing things and I was helping people, you know, with, with herbal medicines <laughs> essentially. And someone didn't like something happened one point and they decided I was a witch and I was burned for being a witch. Okay, that impacted this life in that I had many phobias that were related to the way I passed in that life and when I, earlier, younger on. And once I understood where they were coming from, 
then I don't have a problem with those anymore. So that's nice to know, you know, many times we'll bring over residue from another life, the way we passed in that life. Um, so in that one, I was definitely afraid of fire when I came into this life. Um, and there were different things that happened at that, like they had a hood over my head and they had my hands and my, my ankles bound. And so I was very claustrophobic. I was very, I didn't like things like that. I don't like, don't know whole thing. So see things like that, that make you very uncomfortable. That was all coming from the, that happening. Now, the part that I really enjoy that I brought forward was that healing nature. See, that's apparently been a theme in, in several lives that I've seen. It's like, there's something there that is probably a, a, an integral part of me is to understand how we tick and, and how we heal. Yeah. <laughs> now that's beautiful. Experiencing past lives or recognize them can bring not only like your gifts, but also understand and alleviate, yes. as you said, phobias or fears in this life. Absolutely. That's great. Um, gosh, I mean, it's such a delight to have you on the show. Is there anything else you'd like to show? Oh, first of all, where can, where's the best place for people to connect with you? <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I have my, my website, uh, juliacannon.com, um, where I have, like, we have the book, and that's available at amazon.com or ozarkmt.com. And then I've now created an online course where you can be certified in helping others to understand the language of their body. And that's at juliacannon.com. Um, and you can find me. I also have, see, Facebook, Julia Cannon Soul Speak. And on Instagram, Julia Cannon Official. And TikTok, I think it's Julia Cannon Official. That's a new one, so I'm not really sure. Okay. I'm on YouTube, <laughs> Julia Cannon Soul Speak. So it's like Julia Cannon, you'll find Julia her. Cannon. I will leave a link <laughs> to your website in the show notes. Um, Perfect. Julia, what else would you like to share with the Passion Harvest audience that I haven't asked you? You know, everybody, you have the power. You are the one in control of you. That's, you know, we always, if we want to control, control, and it's the one that you have control over is you and your responses and your reactions and who you are and, and what you think. So that's where your power lies. Take it back. Find your answers within. We are great and powerful beings. We just forgot. I feel like clapping. So simple and so mm -hmm. true. Thank you, Julia. So, Canon, thank you so much for being on Passion Harvest. Thank you so much. <laughs> it's wonderful being here. <laughs> oh, my pleasure. Okay, bye-bye. If you liked this episode, please do subscribe.